Ah, uh, yes. JavaScript's array reduced method. The bane of all JS newcomers' existence. What the heck is accumulator supposed to mean? And current value? Isn't accumulator the current value? What is this thing even for? All right, maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, so let's just break this all down. In simple terms, the purpose of array reduce is to take a list of things and squish or reduce those things down into some output value. As a simple example, maybe we have a list of numbers and you want to get the sum of all of those numbers. Another example would be taking a list of, say, dog breeds, then separating them by how much they're going to shed all over your nice new couch. Let's take a look at a simple example. Like in our description earlier, we've got a simple list of numbers here, and we just want to output the sum of all these numbers. We can do this just using a for loop by first initializing a variable using let like this so we can change it later, creating our for loop per usual, pulling out the current number from the list using the current index, and then adding that number to our total. We'll see that this works perfectly fine as you would expect, but a situation like this could be super well suited instead for array reduce. To port this over to reduce, we'll start by initializing a new variable and setting it equal to num.reduce. The reduce method takes two arguments, the first being a function to be ran for every item in our list, and the second being the initial value that we want to start with. For our example, the second argument is exactly the same as our sum value in our for loop version, so we'll just set it to zero. Our function itself also takes in two arguments. Traditionally, we call these accumulator and current value. The accumulator will start as a value we set using our second argument here, so zero in this case, then we'll change based on whatever we return from this callback function. That may sound confusing, so I find it easier to just call this argument something that makes more sense. For this example, I'll call it current sum, meaning that this value represents the total sum we've counted up to this point in our array. It'll start at zero and then count up to one, then up to three, then up to six, and finally output 10 after adding that final four. The current value argument represents whichever item in our list we're currently acting upon. So when this is first called, it'll be the one for our first item, then two, then three, then four. I'll change this to be called current number to better represent what we're actually doing here. Now inside of our function body, whatever we return from this function will become the accumulator, or in this case, the current sum for the next call of this function. We'll simply return current sum plus current value. I'll add logs in for our arguments in total, as well as a log for our final sum, then run this code. Looking at these logs, we can actually see our sum count up, the number being passed in for each call, and the resulting total eventually giving us our final sum of 10. For a second example, we'll do something a bit more complex. Instead of simply adding numbers together, I want to take this list of people, along with what pet they have, and decide if they're someone that I want to hang out with. If they have a dog, the answer will be yes. If they have a cat, the answer is no. And if they have a lizard, the answer is I don't know, it depends what type of lizard person you are. We'll start by defining our variable. I'll call mine should chill with. We'll set this equal to people.reduce, then define our function and our initial value. Instead of using a number for our initial value, I'll create an object with keys for yes, no, and I don't know. Each of these will start as an empty array, and we'll add to these as we loop over our list of people. I'll call my accumulator argument decisions as it represents the object of decisions we defined below. Then I'll call the second argument person to represent each person in our list of people. If the person's pet is a dog, we'll call decisions.yes.push, passing in the person's name. If the pet is a cat, we'll do the same, but for the no list, and finally just push onto the IDK list for lizards and whatever other pets the person has. If we log out this value, we should see that we do want to chill with Tom and Sarah, don't want to chill with Sam and Alex, and only want to chill with Jeff if he's one of the cool lizard guys. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about Array Reduce. I'd super appreciate a like and a subscribe if this helped, and I'll see you next time. Peace.